Good morning, everybody. It's another episode of Intellectually Honest, unedited, uncut. We're going to get right into it. Before we get started, though, y'all going to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Most definitely hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I drop. And without further ado, we can go ahead and open up. So you know I saw the game last night. You know I saw the game last night. And you know I got some takeaways from it. Lonzo Ball and the Chicago Bulls rolled into the Quicken Loans Arena. The Q to face the Cleveland Cavaliers. DeMar DeRozan is out. Alex Caruso is out. Javante Green is out. That guy Thomas to hit that three when Lonzo got the rebound in that last game, he's out. And Busa did your suspect. So what happened? This was not a great game for the Chicago Bulls. By any stretch of the imagination, this game, there's no silver lining. There's no, uh, there's no moral victories here. There's nothing here except a really, really bad loss against a team that they had no business losing to. Um, it looked like everybody was asleep. Everybody not named Zach Levine, Alonzo Ball came out asleep. Uh, they were giving minimum effort on defense and offense. It was just not a good game to watch. Um, and after a while, uh, I think the the Cavaliers' size just uh, became too much for the Bulls, uh, especially on the inside. I think that uh, Jared Allen kind of bullied uh, the Chicago Bulls, and I just think that um, I think that he 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 ran them off the floor. He beat them off the floor pretty much. Uh, he beat the fight out of them. Uh, Jared Allen did not. He was not for games last night. Um, so I got the stats up. That way you know I'm being factual. That way you know I'm being intellectually honest. And uh, we're going to get right into these stats. So starting out, Lonzo Ball, the number one son. The reason why we're here, 19 points, four rebounds, seven assists, three steals, 50% from the field, 44% from three, three from three from the free throw lines. Stat sheet stuff and Lonzo Ball was great yet again. Can we take a minute out, a minute, just a second to appreciate uh, Lonzo Ball as a scorer? I don't think, sometimes I don't think we really realize uh, the tools that this guy has at his disposal. He's tall, he's long, he has a great three-point shot, he's athletic, he has handles, he, can, he, he sees the game, his perception of the game is immaculate. Lonzo Ball has the skill set. I said in a few videos back, research the log. Lonzo Ball, I said Lonzo Ball is not a, a 20 point scorer in this league. That was, I said that, and I still believe that based on his mindset, not his skill set. His skill set, he can be a 25 point scorer in this league. He has the talent to do that. But his mindset is such that he's always going to defer to making the whole team. A threat. He's going to try to make the whole team a threat as opposed to him just going out and taking over the game. Um, but what we're seeing right now in these last two games with it, with this depleted Bulls roster and Zoe has to take on more of an aggressive role scoring the ball, we're seeing that he's more than capable of doing it and doing it very efficiently. So uh, shout out to Lonzo Ball uh, personally. Uh, and I guess it's kind of just me being greedy uh, at this point, but I, I would kind of like to see Lonzo Ball keep up this aggression even when uh, the team gets back fully intact. Uh, but with DeMar DeRozan and the way he plays, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, but uh, it's good to see Lonzo Ball showing that he's more than capable of doing that uh, when need be. Um, so great game by Lonzo Ball. Zach Levine, 23 points, four rebounds, nine assists, stat sheet stuffing. Uh, not the most efficient scoring uh, night for Zach Levine, but he was there for it on offense, defense, facilitating. He was there for it all game, got to the free throw line. Not a very efficient scoring night uh, by his standards, but uh, still a great game in my books. Uh, he came, he brought the energy. He was more than ready. He was more than right there with Lonzo. And um, the two of them, the two of them really at points looked like they were going to get the Bulls on like a run and get some of that momentum going in the Bulls' favor, but uh, they just didn't have anybody there to kind of support them. And, um, and we're going to get into that. Uh, the Io, the Sumu, 
Uh, I know he's a rookie. I know this is only his second start of his career, but he did not have a good game. This was not a good game by Ayo Sumu by any stretch. There was no intangibles that he showed, nothing. Um, he played for 34 minutes, had five points, three assists. He only took two shots in 34 minutes. That cannot happen when the team is depleted and you're the starting two guards, so you know they're relying on you to get buckets, and you only take – he hit both of them to his credit, but they only take two shots. Uh, it's just not acceptable. He got to the free throw line where he split them. He went 50%. Not much to talk about with Ayo Sumo. He just kind of was just out there getting some cardio in. Uh, burning off the donuts he ate the night before, you know, just getting that exercise up. Uh, Vucevic. Now, Nikola Vucevic is not a rookie. He's not uh, on his second start of his career. He's not a prospect. We're not trying to see what he is. But we are finding out what he may be or what he may not be. Now, Vucevic played 30 minutes and 36 seconds, 18 points, 12, uh, 12 rebounds, and two blocks. Now, you hear that stat line and you go, whoa, that was a pretty good game by Vooch. And whoa, were you wrong? Now, for everybody who's new to basketball, who's new to NBA, each point is worth each basket is worth at least two points. At the perimeter, they're worth three. So to take 23 shots, 23 shots to get 18 points is not good. He shot 34.8% from the field. That is not good. He shot 14.3% from the three. That is not good. One out of seven. And beyond that, he didn't do much else. He had two blocks, which is good. But with the way Jared Allen got busy in the paint, it's kind of like those two blocks, you can go somewhere with those. Vucevic held this team back for the 30 minutes that he played. Vucevic did very little positive, if anything positive. On the court, he cannot. He has not been hitting shots. I said it in a few videos back, researched the log, that Vooch is a huge problem for the Chicago Bulls. He's, he's, he's like an anchor, but not in a good way. He's not a defensive anchor. He's a he's an offensive anchor and a defensive liability. <laughs> so he's he's an anchor because what do anchors do? They stop the flow of the boat. They keep the boat from moving. That's what Vooch is doing. He's keeping his offense stagnant. He, he, he can't trail the play and hit the three because he can't hit the three. He can't run the floor with his old because he's not fast enough. He can't take his man off the dribble. He can't score in the post, as we saw last night. So he's really out there just being big and being being big and inefficient. Um, You know, like a Hummer, the H2, not the H3. He's just big and inefficient. And I just, uh, I at this point, I don't know what we say about him. I, I know people keep saying he's one of the big three. I think they're just saying that because of, uh, you know, to try to be, like, nice about it, I guess, to try to be uh, politically correct. But if we're being honest, 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 intellectually honest, Vooch has not even been the, the fourth best player on this team. He has not been the fourth most impactful player on this team. If you take Vooch out of that starting lineup and replace him with somebody who's just out there, like a center that's just out there to give energy and run the floor – and you get Alex Caruso and DeRozan back, this offense will crank up. Uh, and they'll I guarantee you they'll look a lot better without Vooch. Uh he just doesn't I don't I don't understand how he's gonna fit into this team. I don't see him if he can't hit those threes, if he can't dominate the post, I don't see what he does. Honestly. He had no assists, but I bet he had some turnovers. He had two turnovers. Um yeah. Let me know in the comments how we feeling about Vooch. Vooch is, Vooch is really holding this team back. And um I I like I said, I can't sugarcoat it anymore. Uh his his good games, uh, they pale in comparison to the bad games. I think he's only had like three or four good games. But the bad games, that's and that's the scary thing about it. See, Zoe had a bad game, but then he's bounced back. He had a bad little stretch in New York. But then he's bounced back and had two great games back-to-back. Vooch, 
it's not beyond it's very very reasonable to expect him to have a game similar to this on saturday you know what i mean he could very well come out and put a stat line like this a very efficient scoring night with less points he could have a worse game than this on saturday against miami bam out of bio is worse than jared allen you know bam out of bio is going to get after vooch so i i mean I, I don't really know what to say about vucevic um but we something needs to happen. I don't know whether Billy Donovan needs to rework how this offense is going to flow. Maybe make Zo um, the 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 prime the third scoring option officially to where he's getting more shots. And because um, even tonight, uh, Zo had Zo only Zo took almost half the shots that Vucevic took and had more points. Vucevic took twenty three shots. Zo took twelve, and Zo had more points. You know what I mean? Vucevic, you gotta, we got to do something about this. It needs to be addressed. We, can, we can't just keep saying, oh, he'll get it, he'll get it, he'll get it. Because before you know it, we'll be at the Christmas break. Actually, yeah, the Christmas break is upon us in a few more weeks. We'll be at uh, All-Star. We'll be uh, right on the brink of the playoffs, and we'll still be having these questions. I don't think Vooch is that dude on this team. I, 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 I think that he had a lot of good years in Orlando. He was kind of like a big fish in a small pond kind of thing over there. But on this roster, I just don't see how he fits. I don't see, I don't think he helps the speed. He doesn't help the spacing. He doesn't help the interior defense that much. Uh, as Jared Allen uh, so uh, eloquently demonstrated to us last night. And um, yeah, so let me know how y'all feeling about that. I don't understand what, I don't, I don't know what we need to do with Booch. He's making way too much money to be playing the way he is. And yeah. Um, you know, it needs to be addressed. So Derrick Jones Jr. had an all right game. And in the context of a win, his Derrick Jones Jr. game would have been nice. But uh, just the overall effort that the team gave, I just don't – I didn't see it. Uh, that game, his game kind of – excuse me, I've been up for a minute. His game kind of just goes unnoticed to me because um, it was just such a bad – such a lackluster effort overall as a team. And I just didn't like it. Everybody else was kind of just forgettable. It's just not a good game from anybody. Uh, I, I, I say anybody not named Levine and Lonzo just does not have a good game. So I got a few takeaways. First takeaway is Lonzo Ball needs to take over uh, if they're going to have a chance to win with this depleted roster. Uh, uh, we've seen him kind of like, and, I, and I've seen Billy Donovan uh, play Lonzo Ball the most minutes because even last night, if you watch, that score ballooned. It blew up when Lonzo took, like, the little breaks that he did take. That's when the score, like, Zach Levine could not keep that team afloat last night. Lonzo Ball dang near had to play, you know, the whole first half almost. Um, Lon I, and, and and lucky for for the Bulls, LeVar raised Lonzo and trained Lonzo from a kid to play the whole game. So I think Lonzo Ball is definitely more than capable of doing that um, but that's I think I really think that until in, until we get everybody back, until we get the Rose, and until we get uh, Caruso and even Javante Green, Lonzo Ball is gonna have to play the whole game. Uh, dang near, he's gonna have to be the driving force behind the Bulls' offense, and um, and uh, and also to continue with this takeaway from with Lonzo Ball, Lonzo Ball is just as good a scorer as Lamelo Ball. That's kind of kind of touched on that earlier. But I'm going to add that in more with this takeaway. Uh, the general consensus seems to be the Lamella Ball is the score. Alonzo Ball is a, a defensive focus player. Now, let's be clear. Don't get it twisted without uh, – don't, don't, don't get it twisted like gravy without a biscuit. Alonzo Ball is better than Lamelo on defense, and I don't think that's really a conversation. But what is a conversation is just how close they are on offense. Because yes, there Lamelo has more of a fluidity and a flow to his movements and his and his and his handles and his finishing. He has his oh his game is just a lot more fluid than Lonzo Ball's game, scoring the ball. But because Lonzo Ball is such a high volume and elite three point shooter, and now he's showing the ability that he can get to the rim and finish and catch alleys. Lonzo Ball skill set wise can be a 20-point scorer in this league similar to LaMelo. But mindset-wise is why I think it just it, he's not going to be that. But I just, the first takeaway, I just want to 
Um, I want to I wanna continue to appreciate Lonzo Ball's ability to score and kind of like dead this notion that he can't or uh, uh, for whatever. Like he just doesn't have the ability to. I think that's just all false. And I think we kind of just need to dead that narrative. Uh, and and uh, I think this Bulls team really needs to just rally around Lonzo and let and, and just try their best to keep up with him and just run, 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 uh, run teams off the floor. Like if they, uh, Billy Donovan needs to look everybody in the eyes and say, look, we need to run. Until we get this team back to where DeMar DeRozan can slow everything down and play half-court basketball all night and hog the ball and go Kobe Bryant, whatever, whatever, Lonzo Ball is our only hope. If you don't feel like running with him, let me know. I'll sit you down. Other than that, you need to be running. And he needs to be looking dead at Vucevic while he says that. So uh, that's my first takeaway. That, uh, Alonzo Ball is the only hope for this team. Second takeaway. Vucevic. We need a solution for Vucevic. I, I know I touched on this uh, while I was doing the stats, but I'm really interested in the comments. Let me know in the comments. What what needs to happen with Vooch? Because I think we're beyond the point of waiting and seeing. We're beyond the point of saying that, um, okay, he's just this, uh, he's just struggling. He's, he's, he has to get in this rhythm, stop overreacting. We're 17 and 9. So we're, we, we, we have a pretty decent sample size from Vooch. And um, I just, I, like I said, he, his, his bad games far outnumber the good games. I just don't, I don't see... And that's the thing, like I said, it's not beyond the realm of, of, of possibility for him to have a game equally as bad as this on Saturday. How long are we going to excuse this? Because, like, I don't know if y'all saw the game last night, but Vucevic is literally burdening this team. He's literally an anchor to a, a car, a speedboat that's trying to fly through the waves. He's literally an anchor. He can't run, can't hit the shots, can't hit score in the post. I like I think that it's time to have a heart to heart with Vooch, see where he's at, see what he can actually do, and go from there. I, I don't understand I don't know I don't want to say trade him because his trade value isn't really that high right now, I can't imagine, especially with his contract. But um something needs to give, man. Vooch is the primary thing holding his team back from taking that next level up. It's not the Rose in his ISO ball and breaking down his man. It's, it's Vucevic. He's not, I know, and we keep, they keep saying he's a member of the big three, which he's, I don't say, I don't think he is. Um, he hasn't played like it. So that's my second takeaway. What, what are we doing with Vooch? Something has to give. Uh, he's literally an anchor to the speedboat offense. So uh, let me know in the comments. I'll be down there with y'all going back and forth, agreeing and disagreeing. Um, let me know how y'all feeling about Vooch. And my third takeaway, and I guess my last takeaway, is I'm not overreacting to this loss. I know I said a lot just now, but I'm not overreacting to this loss. Um, this is uh, this is in the NBA. This is what we call a trap game. Uh, the Bulls, they came off a very, very, very impressive win against the Denver Nuggets team, which a lot of people had them losing due to their depleted roster, and they won in dominant fashion. Uh, and they came into the Quicken Loans Arena probably sleeping. Actually, not probably. Them, they, the Bulls came in there playing. Uh, but they but they left giving head counts. Um, and uh, that can happen in the NBA. Uh, like I said, only two of the players showed up to play. Booch showed up to play, but he just didn't play well. He took a lot of shots, man. He just didn't hit a lot of them. Um so yeah, we can't overreact to this game. It's just a, it's just one loss. Um, it, a very very depleted roster, and um, all we can do is get better. But we got like I said, we will be tested again on Saturday because uh, we got the Miami Heat and and Bam Adebayo isn't any more easier than uh, Jared Allen. So Vucevic needs to he needs to decide what he's gonna do. He needs to decide if he's gonna go out there and exert himself and, and play like he can play, or do we need to start exploring other options? And and Lonzo Ball needs to get the ball and just straight up run. I'm talking just run all night, all night long. Run, 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 run. And um, that's the only way the Bulls are going to have a chance to survive, relatively speaking, um, during this time where they don't have their whole roster there. So um, that's about it for me. This is another episode of Intellectually Honest in the Books. 
Uh, I appreciate you guys rocking with me every day. Like, comment, subscribe if you want. Uh, if you love Bulls content, if you love Lonzo Ball content, Boston Celtics content, and everything in between. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I drop. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to let y'all up out of here. Catch y'all in the next one.